thinking about made-up stories from the past, especially about famous people like Alexander the Great and Napoleon, can be fun and creative. But we should know that these stories are just thoughts and guesses, not based on real facts. Also, comparing leaders from very different times is hard because the way wars were fought and strategies used were quite different, with that said, let's pretend and imagine a pretend battle between Alexander the Great and Napoleon, in this fight we put five standards. Let's start by, technological and strategic advancements, 1. Firearms. Napoleon's era, which spanned the late 18th and early 19th centuries, witnessed the widespread use of firearms, including muskets and rifles. These firearms allowed for greater firepower at a distance compared to the relatively rudimentary ranged weapons available during Alexander's time. The adoption of firearms revolutionized infantry tactics and added a new dimension to warfare. 2. Artillery. Napoleon's armies had access to highly effective artillery, such as cannons and howitzers. These artillery pieces had a significant impact on the battlefield, providing long-range firepower and the ability to breach fortifications. In contrast, Alexander the Great's artillery was limited to simple siege engines like ballistae and catapults, which were less advanced and versatile. 3. Transportation The Napoleonic era saw improvements in transportation including the use of horse-drawn carriages and wagons for moving troops and supplies. This allowed for faster mobilization and better logistical support compared to the mostly foot-based transportation available to Alexander's armies. Strategic Advancements 1. Structured Army Napoleon's Grande Army was a well-organized and disciplined force. It featured standardized uniforms, training, and ranks, creating a more cohesive and efficient army compared to the heterogeneous forces that Alexander the Great often commanded. 2. Logistics. Napoleon was known for his meticulous attention to logistics. His armies were well supplied and could sustain long campaigns, thanks to improved supply lines, depots, and efficient rationing systems. Alexander's campaigns, while brilliant strategically, often faced logistical challenges, especially in remote regions. 3. Communication systems. Napoleon benefited from more advanced communication systems, including semaphore telegraphs and couriers on horseback. These systems allowed for quicker dissemination of orders and intelligence compared to the limited communication methods available to Alexander, which relied heavily on riders and messengers. The second one is tactical and strategic prowess, tactics and strategy of Alexander the Great. 1. Innovative military tactics. Alexander was a master of adapting and innovating military tactics according to the situation on the battlefield. He was particularly skilled in analyzing the enemy's weaknesses and quickly devising strategies to exploit them. His ability to think on his feet and adjust his tactics in real time contributed significantly to his success in battle. 2. Hammer and Anvil Strategy One of Alexander's most famous tactical maneuvers was the Hammer and Anvil Strategy. He would position his forces to engage the enemy head-on, the Anvil, while simultaneously using a mobile cavalry force, the Hammer, to strike at the enemy's flanks or rear. This tactic often led to encirclement and demoralization of the opposing forces. 3. Effective use of phalanx and cavalry. Alexander effectively utilized the phalanx, a tightly packed formation of heavily armed infantry, for its defensive and offensive capabilities. He combined the phalanx with skilled and agile cavalry, leveraging their speed, maneuverability, and shock value to disrupt enemy formations and exploit weaknesses. Tactics and Strategy of Napoleon Bonaparte 1. Artillery Utilization Napoleon's military brilliance lay in his innovative use of artillery. 
He integrated artillery seamlessly into his formations, using it for both offensive and defensive purposes. The strategic positioning of cannons to soften enemy lines before infantry assaults was a hallmark of Napoleon's warfare tactics. 2. Flexible formations. Napoleon introduced more flexible and versatile military formations compared to the rigid formations of his time. He used combined arms tactics, allowing infantry, cavalry, and artillery to complement each other effectively. His ability to adapt formations to exploit changing battlefield circumstances showcased his strategic acumen. 3. Speed and maneuverability. Napoleon was known for his swift and decisive movements on the battlefield. He emphasized rapid troop mobilization, exploiting weaknesses in the enemy's defense, and encircling or outflanking opponents. This focus on speed and maneuverability often took his adversaries by surprise and gave him a critical advantage. The third one knowledge and experiences, knowledge and experience of Alexander the Great, one, military genius, Alexander the Great was undeniably a military genius, displaying exceptional strategic acumen from a young age. He was a pupil of Aristotle and gained a thorough education in diverse fields, including philosophy, politics, and natural sciences. This intellectual breadth infused his military campaigns with a deeper understanding of tactics and governance. 2. Unblemished record. Alexander's reputation as an unparalleled military leader is underscored by his flawless record in battle. He never suffered a decisive defeat during his conquests of Asia, Egypt, and Persia, a testament to his tactical brilliance, adaptability, and the loyalty of his troops. 3. Varied terrains and diverse opponents. Alexander faced a wide array of adversaries across different terrains during his conquests. From the deserts of Egypt to the mountains of Central Asia, he demonstrated adaptability by tailoring his strategies to the unique challenges posed by each region. This breadth of experience enhanced his understanding of warfare in diverse environments. Knowledge and experience of Napoleon Bonaparte, 1. Strategic brilliance and tactical innovations. Napoleon Bonaparte was a strategic visionary known for his innovative military tactics and operational brilliance. Rising through the ranks during the French Revolutionary Wars, he displayed an innate talent for organizing and leading troops, often employing unconventional strategies that brought him early success. 2. Track record of success. Napoleon's military career was marked by an extraordinary series of victories. He emerged as a dominant force in Europe during the Napoleonic Wars, achieving triumphs in numerous significant battles, such as Austerlitz, Genauerstedt, and Wagram. His prowess on the battlefield led to the creation of a vast empire under his rule. 3. Versatile campaigns and adversaries. Napoleon faced a multitude of opponents, each with unique strengths and strategies. His campaign spanned across Europe, requiring him to adapt to various military doctrines, terrains, and cultures. This breadth of experience provided him with a comprehensive understanding of the complexities of warfare on a continental scale. The fourth one troop compositions, troop composition of Alexander the Great, 1. Infantry. The backbone of Alexander's army was the infantry organized into phalanxes. The Macedonian phalanx was a formidable unit characterized by soldiers carrying long pikes called sarissas. This heavy infantry formation provided a powerful offensive and defensive force on the battlefield. 2. Cavalry. Alexander recognized the strategic importance of cavalry and maintained a significant contingent of mounted troops. His companion cavalry, consisting of elite warriors, played a crucial role in battles, often delivering decisive charges and flanking maneuvers. 3. Archers and skirmishers. Archers formed an essential part of Alexander's ranged warfare capabilities. 
They provided both harassment and cover fire during engagements. Additionally, skirmishers armed with slings, javelins, and darts were used to disrupt enemy formations and harass opponents. Troop Composition of Napoleon Bonaparte 1. Infantry Napoleon's army featured a well-organized and disciplined infantry force. The infantry was the largest component of his armies, often divided into line infantry, grenadiers, and light infantry. Line infantry formed the corps, engaging in both offensive and defensive maneuvers. 2. Artillery A hallmark of Napoleon's forces was the inclusion of artillery units. Cannons and howitzers were critical assets, used to soften enemy lines, create breaches in fortifications, and provide long-range support during battles. The effective use of artillery was a key element of Napoleon's success on the battlefield. 3. Cavalry Napoleon's cavalry was a diverse and dynamic force, playing a vital role in his military strategies. He utilized different types of cavalry, including heavy cavalry like cuirassiers, light cavalry like hussars, and dragoons. They were employed for reconnaissance, charges, and exploiting weak points in the enemy lines. 4. Specialized Units Napoleon's army featured specialized units, such as engineers responsible for constructing fortifications, bridges, and defensive structures. Skirmishers, often drawn from light infantry, were employed for scouting, screening, and engaging in skirmishes with the enemy. The last one is how the terrain, circumstances, army sizes, and various environmental factors could play crucial roles in determining the outcome of a battle between Alexander the Great and Napoleon Bonaparte, terrain and its influence. 1. Geographical features the battle's location, whether it's a flat plain, a mountainous region, or a river valley, would greatly affect the strategies and tactics employed. Alexander's preference for open plains might give him an advantage in maneuvering his cavalry, whereas Napoleon might leverage natural barriers for defensive positions. 2. Visibility and cover, the availability of cover, such as forests or hills, could impact the effectiveness of ranged weapons and the ability to surprise the enemy. Alexander might benefit from the open terrain, allowing for his cavalry charges, while Napoleon could utilize cover for his artillery and infantry. 3. Obstacles and choke points, rivers, gorges, or narrow passes could become strategic choke points, influencing the movement and engagement of troops. Utilizing or controlling these choke points could be a critical aspect of the battle strategy for both commanders. Circumstances and strategic considerations 1. Preparedness and intelligence, awareness of the opponent's strengths, weaknesses, and overall battle plan would heavily influence the initial strategy. Both commanders would likely conduct thorough reconnaissance and intelligence gathering to tailor their approaches accordingly. 2. Alliance and Diplomacy The geopolitical context and potential alliances or allegiances would be pivotal. Alexander and Napoleon would consider the political climate and potential support or opposition from other nations or factions, which could impact their strategic decisions. 3. Morale and Troop Confidence the morale and confidence of the troops, influenced by the reputation and leadership style of their respective commanders, would significantly affect the outcome. Maintaining high morale and instilling confidence in their soldiers would be a priority for both Alexander and Napoleon. Army sizes and composition, 1. Relative strengths and weaknesses, the size and composition of the armies would dictate the overall strategies and tactics. Alexander might capitalize on his cavalry strength, while Napoleon could exploit his superior artillery and well-organized infantry. 2. Reinforcements and reserves. The availability of reserves and the potential for reinforcements during the battle would impact risk-taking and the ability to adapt to changing circumstances. The timing and utilization of reserves could be a critical factor in determining victory. 
environmental factors, 1. Weather conditions. Weather, such as rain, snow, or extreme heat, could affect the performance and effectiveness of troops, equipment, and tactics. Napoleon's familiarity with European climates might give him an advantage if the battle takes place in Europe. 2. Logistics and supplies. The ability to maintain supply lines and ensure sufficient provisions for the troops would be crucial. Efficient logistics could sustain the army's strength and effectiveness over a prolonged engagement. In a pretend battle between Alexander the Great and Napoleon, thinking about who would win is quite tricky. There are so many things to think about, like where the battle would happen, how big their armies would be, and what the weather would be like. Both Alexander and Napoleon were really good at leading their armies, and they had different skills and tricks up their sleeves. The truth is, it's hard to say for sure who would come out as the winner. It would depend on a lot of things and how they use their skills and strategies on that particular day, but in real life, both Alexander the Great and Napoleon Bonaparte were amazing military leaders during their own times. They did incredible things that are still remembered today. Alexander conquered a huge empire, and Napoleon was a brilliant general who reshaped Europe. Their stories are a big part of history, and they are remembered as two of the greatest military leaders ever.